Not bad. <laughs> So welcome back everybody. Welcome back new subscribers. Welcome back current subscribers. How are you guys doing today? Um, if you're not subscribed guys, please consider it. Just hit the little button down below. I greatly appreciate it. So today we're actually gonna talk about my AR-15 that I haven't really talked about on this channel much, but more importantly, we're gonna talk about this new SRC XPB bolt carrier group that just got launched recently. This bad boy from Sharps Rifle Company. Um, if you guys don't remember them, a couple of years ago, they released a bolt called the Relia Bolt. And there were some heat treating issues with those bolts. You can't have a bolt carrier called Bolt Relia Bolt and then the bolts break in less than a thousand rounds. Well, that's what happened. It, it just turned out that they got heat treated for just a tad bit too long. And don't get me wrong, everyone that had issues got a free replacement and nobody's had issues since. Now there is a lot going on with this bolt carrier group that we're gonna have to dive down and talk about. Um, right now, I'm currently sitting around 450-ish, 500 rounds through this, so this won't be a complete review. This is gonna be more of a first impressions of this and what I think about it. This thing has so much innovation going into it that I'm just really happy that they sent this to me and asked me to review it because I was actually looking at these anyway, so pretty excited. Now, innovation and tooling and processes that go into this, I'm just gonna be straight up with you. It far surpasses mil spec. I mean, like I said, we'll have to dive up close. We'll take a look at this and let's just see if this is something that's gonna be worth our time or not. All right, guys. So this is my AR-15. I actually really haven't talked much about my AR-15 on the channel. I don't know why. I just haven't done a lot of AR-15 stuff with this one. I've done builds for others, but nothing really with this one. So it's interesting about this. This is a dirt cheap build. It's like a radical firearms upper, Anderson lower, uh, mission first tactical stock, and uh, you know, mag pull grip, strike industries for grip. I don't even have like a muzzle brake on this thing. But <laughs> what else is funny is if you notice, the key mod on here is actually backwards. See what I mean? Here's the arrow precision and there's the radical firearms. But, you know, honestly, Radical Firearms is the only company that I've seen that have these backwards. And I don't know why. Some people say that Radical Firearms is the only company to ever get it right. But with that said, it doesn't really matter. It hasn't affected any of the attachments. On this one, it's just got mil spec lower parts kit. I'm running the uh, XP8 Atabal 1x8 scope that's illuminated, similar to a red dot. And then I, I usually have some irons on here, but ever since I put this on there, I haven't really worried about it because it has an etched reticle. What we're talking about today is this Sharps Rifle Company XPB bolt carrier group that just came out. Now I've actually had this bolt carrier group since like June or May, somewhere in there. Sharps Rifle Company reached out, sent me an email and said, hey, we would love for you to test this out and give us your thoughts. Problem was it got super freaking hot right when I got this and I wasn't able to go do any outdoor shooting because of the fire hazards. So I kind of just sat on this for a while and I'll tell you, this chamber is really dirty. Like I beat the crap out of this gun. This is kind of like my torture test type AR. And I actually did that on purpose. I purposefully did not clean the chamber because a dirty chamber is the number one reason that the bolts break. And we're gonna talk about that here in a sec. So a couple of things to note about the Sharps Rifle Company XPB. There's more going on than meets the eye. Now something that I've always talked about in every single build video that I've done with my AR-10 build, with my AR pistol build, is there are two things you don't cheap out on on an AR-15. You can cheap out on every other part, but you don't cheap out on the bolt carrier group and you don't cheap out on the barrel. If you just get high-end bolt carrier, high-end barrel, you can go as budget as you want for most of the other parts on the AR-15 and it will run like a champ. Now, what makes this one better, this is a standard mil-spec bolt carrier group. The only difference is this is a nitrided one. Standard bolts are made of Carpenter 158 steel and which is a great steel. That's mil-spec steel, it's a tool steel. And uh, the standard carriers are made out of an 8620 steel, which is a little bit weaker, but the carrier doesn't really get a lot of the force. It's mainly, most of this force is exerted on this bolt. Well, with this one, this bolt 
and the bolt carrier are made of a S7 tool steel, which is, has 75% stronger tensile strength than the Carpenter 158. Even the carrier is made out of that. And I, and I know that 8620 is weaker than tool steel, so I can't imagine how much stronger this carrier is. Now, what's really cool about this, now this thing has had four or 500 rounds and I haven't even cleaned it yet. Like you can see some of it coming off on my hands, but this has the DLC coating, which stands for diamond light carbon coating. It's a process in which the coating is actually impregnated into the metal so it won't come off. Now what's cool about it is you can just wipe it clean, similar to like a nickel boron, but it's tougher. So I'm just gonna wipe off this bolt here. We're gonna take it apart and clean it so you can get a look at it too. But really interesting stuff going on here. Now also, you'll notice that there's weight removed from the rear and you'll notice a bunch of these flat cuts along this bolt carrier group. And you'll notice like on this side, you got like this divot down in here. Very, just a different design altogether. And the reason that is, is they made this a balanced bolt carrier group. So on a standard bolt carrier, when it's in the gun and it's cycling, when the gases push it backwards, it will kind of tilt back as it's moving back. And it will put a lot more friction on the bottom here and a lot more friction on the top as it's coming back and then it kicks back. It's not that dramatic, but I'm just doing that for example purposes. But that's what happens with a, with a standard mil spec bolt. Now with this one, because it's balanced, it either eliminates or reduces the cant at which it goes backwards. So if that one, for example, goes up this far, this one will come up this far or not at all. So that's cool. It, it means it's gonna have less recoil and it's gonna shoot flatter, which is awesome. It definitely in the hand, I can tell that it has a lot less mass than the standard mil spec bolt, which is great. Less mass means lighter recoil. So I'm cool with that. Not that, you know, 5.56 five, and 2.23 have high recoil, but hey, less is more, right? Now, what's cool about it is if you kind of look at it, notice how these cuts are here and on this one, no cuts on it. Now, what these cuts do is they serve a couple of different functions. One, like I said, reduced mass, but two, it reduces friction. Less friction means less heat and less heat means that it lasts longer. So that's a good thing. Like for example, you know, on the inside of the upper receiver, it won't rub where this is cut out. All kinds of cool stuff. Also, the side here is completely flat. You'll notice on a top down profile, it almost looks like the slide of a firearm because it's flat. Whereas on the top down profile of a standard, it's rounded. Something to keep in mind, the gas key is uh, properly staked. And what I mean by properly staked is the sides being pushed in are actually affecting the screws here. I actually had a friend who had a, I have a friend who had a CMMG um, AR-15 and it had a staked bolt, um, staked gas key, but they weren't properly staked and they ended up backing out and it was, it was bad, but we fixed it, so that's cool. Another thing that I look for in a bolt carrier and a barrel is high pressure testing and magnetic particle inspecting and basically what that is, it's a test that they do to look for imperfections in the steel, as well as making sure that they can hold up to the pressure. And now most of that's mainly done on the bolt for bolt carrier groups, um, not so much on the carrier. The carrier will be magnetic particle inspected, but most of the high pressure testing is right here on the bolt. Also, this bolt is shot peened. And what that means is it's a hardening process of the metal so that will make sure that not only is it S7 tool steel, but it's shot peened, which makes it even more harder on the surface. And then you got the DLC coating on top of that, makes this for a badass bolt carrier group. Now, what I was talking about earlier is when I tested it in a dirty chamber, and this is why. I mean, honestly, guys, you wanna keep your chambers clean. Don't get me wrong. But if you notice on the right, we have a mill spec. On the left, we have the sharps. You'll notice that these front lugs are at an angle and a lot of times with bolt carriers, if you don't clean your chamber, when this, when these lugs are going back into the chamber, if there's a lot of carbon and crud buildup, it will put pressure pushing back on here. And over time, these lugs will break off and you'll have to buy a new bolt. So because these are angled here, number one, you have nothing to get pressed against. It'll fit into the chamber 
more securely and snugly without so much pressure being pushed on it. And then when pressure does get pushed on it, it's less likely to break it because it's an angle. So really cool design. Now let's take this apart real quick. And we'll, we're gonna clean it up and that way you guys can get a feel for it. So this is the bolt after about 400, 500 rounds, somewhere in there. Um, it's kind of hard to see because of the color. There's a little bit of carbon here. This is usually where you get a lot of fouling on the bolt. But everywhere else, it looks clean as a whistle, which is really shocked me that it's ran so clean, especially on a gas impingement system. So let's let's try cleaning this without any lube or, or without any solvent first and see how it does. So you can still see a little crud there, not a huge deal. Let's take a look at the firing pin. Not bad, let's wipe it off. Beautiful. So firing pin looks good, no issues there. This is my, actually my first time taking this completely apart. I just kind of slapped it in the gun, lubed it up a little bit and ran it. So here we got the cam pin, looking good. Usually on cam pins, I get a lot of fouling on those as well. This one's not too bad at all. Now let's look at the carrier. I actually don't think I need to put much. I'm gonna use some of this uh, shooter lube. I actually been using this for a while. And for ARs, I prefer a two-step um, process instead of a CLP, um, solvent and an oil. Um, for Glocks, I usually use CLPs, but I only need to put a little bit of sol solvent here and see if we can't get that off. So as a lot of you guys know right now, the gun market, specifically the AR market, is kind of in a recession right now. And there's lots of companies that went in and bought tons of AR-15 parts because they thought they were gonna sell like crazy this year. And it turns out it's not happening. For example, this is a no-name bolt carrier group that I purchased for about $135. Now it is, High pressure tested, it is magnetic particle inspected, and it is properly staked. It is made of Carpenter 158 tool steel. This is completely mil spec. I say all that to say this. This one was $135, and there's not a whole lot special about it. Now this was back when AR-15s, uh, you know, everybody was wanting. This was like 2015 when I bought this. End of 2015 was when I bought this, and uh, you know, the demand was super high. Well, because of this recession now, you can pick these bad boys up for like anywhere between 175 and about 200-ish dollars, which isn't bad because I can guarantee you that back then, these bolts would have been $300. So cool little thing on the price. Let's see how our bolt's doing and see if we can get that crud off of it here. Now, I didn't let that sit very long. But I just kind of wanted to get a feel, see how much crud I could get off of it. This is without any scraping on it. Still got a little crud down in this. This is always the hardest part. And they got specific jigs and tools you can use to clean that. But I'm going to use a penny because a penny is copper soft and uh, it's cheaper. A penny is a lot cheaper than buying the tools. And you don't got to worry about jacking up your uh, S7 tool steel with a penny. That seemed to do the trick for the most part. I mean, I could sit here and scrape more, but it came off really easily actually with a penny. So not too bad. Let's put this back together. And then we're gonna jump up top and talk a little bit about my final thoughts on this. And then we'll wrap up this review. Back up top. That is the Sharps Rifle Company XPB Bolt Carrier Group. What I think is, you know, based on the 450 to 500 rounds, you know, I, it works great. After spending so much time with a, a, an AR-15, I can usually look at a bolt carrier group after some use and start to see like surface cracks or anything if it's going to occur. Don't get me wrong, I can't see anything that could go wrong but it doesn't look like it had any wear as you guys could see up close. I mean, no wear at all. The DLC coating is doing its job. The shot peening is doing its job. And then the S7 tool still, that's just insane. Like that is over engineering at its best. And the best part is these things are like anywhere from 175 to $200. I'll put links down below. Some of them I'll be affiliated with. Some of them I won't. Runs like a champ. I, I don't have any complaints about it yet. I think right now with the current state of the AR-15 market, you know, with prices being down, this is something to jump on because like I said, two years ago, 
these bulk carrier grips would run about $300 back at the height of the market. You know, given recent events, the height of that market might come back. So that's just kind of where I'm at with this. But if I was in your shoes and I was like, hey, this guy just came out with a video talking about this badass new bolt carrier group. Should I go buy it right now? Well, that depends. I think if you're gonna do a new build, go ahead. I think if uh, you have a shitload of rounds through your current mil spec, go ahead. I think if your carrier is actually not an M16 carrier, but an AR-15 carrier, which the difference is the backs are cut further up, then yeah, I would just go ahead and replace that. I give this thing a 10 out of 10. Price is right, the over-engineering is there, and I've had no issues. And it has like zero wear on it after 500 rounds. And the chamber was dirty. I haven't cleaned this gun in forever. So 100% dig that. I did run it a little bit dry um, throughout this process. I didn't always lube it up. I like to run things dry sometimes just to see what will happen. Um, ran great. So let me know if you guys have any questions down below what you think about this bolt carrier group or what your favorite bolt carrier group is. And we'll discuss it, have a good old time, just like we always do, poke fun at each other, make fun of each other's faces, whatever the case may be. So until next time, I love you guys and stay sexy.